Good afternoon, everybody. This is Kathy Salisbury, the director of the Ambler Arboretum of Temple University. And one of the things that has come up at the Arboretum is that we have had most of our ash trees killed by the emerald ash borer, which has resulted in us having to take down a lot of trees in the hundreds of trees um, to ensure safety for those who like to visit the Arboretum. And um, I'm here at home because I can't be at the Arboretum during this uh, quarantine and social distancing. But um, one of the projects that we've taken on is taking down a dead ash tree. And so what I wanted to show is just sort of what the emerald ash borer does to an ash tree and what's caused uh, all of that damage and caused us to have to take down a uh, take down so many trees. Here is an ash tree in my yard. This is uh, Fraxinus americana, the white ash. And you can see it has very distinctive bark here. And this one is pretty tall and it's still alive. And it's hard to see, but if you look up into the canopy here, I'm very excited that all these little dark spots there are buds. So ash trees have much darker buds than the rest of the twigs. And so this tree is still alive. It's still doing okay. So I feel pretty lucky about that. So this is the ash tree bark, very distinctive kind of ropey braided pattern, very deep ridges and furrows. And with the white ash, as it gets older, the lowest bark gets sort of like alligator skin, very deeply ridged and furrowed and broken up into these blocks. And so I'm going to walk you over to the remnants of the tree we took town today and um, show you what we found on the inside of the tree. So let's go for a walk over to the wood pile. Wow, so one of the first things you'll notice, or how do you tell if you have emerald ash borer that's killed your tree, the distinctive characteristic is this S-shaped gallery. So we call this the trail that the insect leaves. This is the larva, the um, immature emerald ash borer, leaves these trails throughout, uh, underneath the bark and in the cambium, the growing portion of the tree. And this is actually what kills the tree. And so you see here, this is, they make an S shape, so they kind of zigzag through. And if we look closely here, we can see different stages of growth. So here is one very small one here. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Maybe not. This amateurs doing, there we go, there's there's a, uh, that actually looks like a pupa there, but you can see the S-shaped gallery. And then here, you can see it's getting a little larger. Again, here's the, the S-shaped gallery. And then here you see the pupa, or I'm sorry, this is the larva here. So a little larger. You can see they dig around in this growing portion of the tree and that is what kills the tree. And then, here you can see this one. Oh, there's our friend again. And let's look in here. So here we, so here we have. Um, this looks like it's going to uh, turn into the beetle. It's going to metamorphosize into the beetle next, where it will emerge from the tree as an adult. And these emerge as adults from the tree about the same time that black locusts start blooming which is really interesting. And so if you were looking to control this, that is the time when you would want to control them because the adults are much easier to control than the larvae that are in the tree. So you can see where they hang out just under the bark. You can scrape away the bark here. And um, if you have ash trees that are alive, I wouldn't cut them down because they might have resistance to emerald ash borer, which is great. And they could pass that resistant genetics on to other trees and um, then become resistant to this pest and so I wouldn't cut them down but in the case of this tree 
it was completely dead, killed by the emerald ash borer, and so we've made firewood out of it. And um, the other thing you might start to notice, and if you're wondering about your tree, so here's another great example of the S-shaped galleries that these insects leave underneath the bark. So the bark's been peeled away, and there's the S-shaped gallery here. Another thing you might start to notice is um, woodpecker damage. So if you take a look here, if you take a look here, um, you can see the insects were underneath the bark and the woodpeckers have scraped away the bark to get at the emerald ash borer larva because it's a delicious high protein snack, I'm assuming. And so you can see they've scraped away bark. So on dead trees or dying trees, you can look up into the canopy and on the trunk, you can see um, the lighter patches where the woodpeckers have picked away the bark. You also might find in extreme situations, it looks like somebody piled up chunky wood chips around the trunk of the tree, around the base of the tree. And that's just the woodpecker pulling off so much bark that it's piled up around the tree. So that's a good clue that there's emerald ash borer there as well. So here's another example where the woodpecker is kind of picked away all of the bark there to get at that delicious fat larva that we saw before. And let's see what we can find if we take away this, this bark here. Let's see what it reveals under here. So you can kind of peel away this bark And you see the S-shaped galleries, all the damage that's been done by this insect. One way also to tell if you have emerald ash borer in your tree is to look for what they call D-shaped exit holes. And so these occur as the adult insects leave the tree and they're D-shaped, and they could be an upside down D, a sideways D, a backwards D. They're D-shaped because the head of the beetle is flat on one side. So when they emerge out of the tree, they leave a hole that is D-shaped. So sometimes you can see a D-shaped exit hole. And then you know for sure it's emerald ash borer because there's native borers that live in ash trees that are just part of our ecosystem. But these were introduced and are invasive and they kill our ash trees. So they're not, the native ones won't leave a D-shaped exit hole. So that's a little bit of information about the emerald ash borer. These are getting turned into firewood for next season. But um, if you have a live ash tree, do the best you can for it. And um, if you have a dead one or one that's fallen, take a look and see what you can find under the bark. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Kathy Salisbury from the Ambler Arboretum. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the gardens again soon.